54 all the way up to 56. Manye mamanu graha isha te krito. Rajan hu bandha pagam ho yadrits chaiha. Ya partha yate sarubir ekacharya. Vanam viviksad beer akanda bumi pai. Manye mama nugraha isha te krito. Rajan hu bandha pagam ho yadrits chaiha. Ya parte yate sarubir ekacharya ya. Vanham vivaksad beer akanda bumi pai. Manye mama nugraha isha te krito. Rajan hu bandha pagam ho yadrits chaya. Ya parte yate saru beer ekacharya ya. Vanham viviksad beer akanda bumi pai. I think Mama to me Anugraha Mercy Isha O Lord Te by you Krita Dun Rajya to kingdom Anubandha of attachment Apagama the removal Yadrits chaya, spontaneous, ya, which, parth yate, is prayed for, 
साधु बी सैंतली एक कचार्या इन सालिट्यूड बनम द फारस विवेक सद बी हु डिजायर टू एंटर अकंदा अनलिमिटेड भूमि ऑफ लैंड्स भाई बाय रूलर्स translation my lord i think you have shown me mercy since my attachment to my kingdom has spontaneously ceased such freedom is prayed for by saintly rulers of vast empires who desire to enter the forest for a life of solitude <laughs> next verse o all powerful one i desire no boon other than the service of your lotus feet the boon most eagerly sought by those free from material desire o hari what enlightened person would worship you the giver of liberation would choose a boon that causes his own bondage so there's a one line purport the lord offered muchikunda anything he desired but muchikund muchikunda desired only the lord this is pure krishna consciousness ओम अज्ञान तिमिरंदस्य गिनाजिनासाकाय चक्षु उन्मीलितं येना तस्मै श्री गुरवे नमः श्री चैतन्य मनोगिस्तं स्थापितं येन भूतले स्वयं रूपा कदम्मयं ददाति स्वापतन्ते क वन्दे हम श्री गुरो श्री उत्तापदे कमल श्री गुरु ंदु जगत गोपेशमोस्तुते तप्त कंचन घोरांगी राधे वृंदावनेश्वरी वृषभानुसुति देवी प्राणमा हरि प्रिय वंशाकोपतरुभ्य कृपा सिंधु एच पदीता पावनेभ्यो वैष्णवेभ्यो नम नम जाय श्रीकृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु निनंद श्री अद्वैत गदाधार शिवासरी गौर भक्तविंद हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे सो वर हियरिंग अबाउट मुचिकुंडा मुचिकुंडा वाज अ ग्रेट किंग एंड आल्सो अ ग्रेट फाइटर ही फॉट सो वैलेंटली एंड सो हीरोइकली दैट ही प्लीज द देवस सो मच सो दैट दे वांटेड टू ऑफर हिम a benediction what did he ask for <laughs> sleep <laughs> he wanted to go to sleep <laughs> sometimes we want that benediction <laughs> especially after a hard day's work <laughs> so his he he fought so valiantly that after fighting for hundreds of years thousands of years he just wanted to sleep he didn't want to be bothered <laughs> so he was re- he's received that of course the devas can only give material benedictions they can't give anything more than that very lofty benedictions but he chose something very ordinary nothing very elevated like a kingdom or you know wealth or great followers he simply chose you know i don't want to be bothered <laughs> i just want to sleep but somehow or other by some previous pious activities he got he was in the position to do some seva for the lord and by that good fortune of doing that seva he pleased the lord what was that seva the lord was fighting he was fighting with one untouchable kaliyavana and the lord didn't want to kill him directly because he was such a low class personality that he ran from the battlefield it's unbecoming the lord to actually run he's called ranchor one who escapes or one who runs away 
from the battlefield. He looks like a coward, but he had a purpose. He wanted to benedict, benedict his devotee to do some service. When we get a chance to do some service, we consider that a great opportunity. Of course, we might say there's always service available, but one who understands the value of such service, no matter how insignificant it may be, is grateful for that opportunity. Because service to the Lord or service to the Lord's devotee is actually the essence of our fulfillment of all our desires. Whatever desires we need or have can be fulfilled completely, perfectly by serving the Lord and serving the Lord's pure devotee. So he got a special mercy. And uh, the Lord led Kalyavana into a cave. Kalyavana was really enthusiastic to try to kill the Lord, but the cave was so dark he couldn't even find out who was who. But he saw this, this being sleeping, and he thought it was Krishna. He thought, oh, now he's running, now he's sleeping. What kind of fighter is this? So in anger, he wanted to fight with the Lord, so he kicked Muchikunda. But Muchikunda also asked for a double benediction. It wasn't like he just wanted to sleep. His benediction was that if anybody wakes me up, that's it, they're finished. <laughs> he wanted the power to burn them with his glance to ashes. And he was given that special power. I guess sometimes when we wake up in the morning, we feel like that. You know, we want to. The f <laughs> first person we see, we burn to ashes. <laughs> Not actually, but I mean, we have that mood. <laughs> I have to get up. Oh. So he he used that power, and Kali Ivana thought it was Krishna, but actually it wasn't. Muchikunda woke up, and the first person he saw was Kali Ivana. And so he was finished. He was overcooked, burnt to a crisp. <laughs> The preparation failed, but the, the operation was success. <laughs> so, and so then the Lord appeared. And when he saw the Lord after waking up, he offered beautiful prayers to the Lord. And it's the last so many verses, 10, 15 verses. He's offering beautiful prayers to the Lord. After seeing the Lord, he forgot all about his material desires. This is a special mercy of the Lord. This also happened with Dhruva Maharaj the same way. Dhruva Maharaj wanted a kingdom greater than his father, grandfather, and great-grandfather, who was Lord Brahma himself. He aspired for something so materially difficult that it was even impossible to conceive of what such benediction could be given to him. But... That's what he wanted. But when he saw the Lord, the Lord appeared to him. He thought, oh, what a fool. <laughs> I've been asking for something that is really insignificant, and now I have the greatest opportunity to offer my loving service to you. What a fool I am for asking for something material. Material benedictions simply cause us more and more difficulty, no matter how great they are because they attach us to the material energy. And that's the problem. Although well, one may receive some mercy through something material, having a good family or having great opportunities for getting more and more success in life, it just causes us to think that this success is, is good. But actually, material success has a tendency to lead us away from the actual goal of life, which is Prema Pumartha Mahan, loving transcendental ser service to the Lord. And so when Muchikunda saw the Lord, as Dhruva saw the Lord, immediately they forgot. We're seeing the Lord every day in the deity form. She see Radha Gopinachi Ki Jai. Such a beautiful transcendental form of the Lord. But our eyes have to be purified as we somehow detach ourselves from any tendency for finding material happiness in this world. And Krishna reveals himself more and more like that. 
And as he reveals himself, then we we realize it's totally insignificant. Anything, any material success in this world is like, as as Dhruva Maharaj said, broken pieces of glass. (laughs) Why? Because the heart can never be satisfied with anything in this material world. Because we're not material. We have a body, but we're not the body. So the body has requirements, so we take care of that. But our actual success in life is our, is our transcendental loving service to the Lord. And as that increases, that fulfills all of our desires, completely, perfectly, eternally. So Muchikunda realized that simply by taking the, the beautiful darshan of the Lord. And now the Lord is so pleased. See, this is the nature of the Lord. He's grateful for the service of his devotee. Although he doesn't need anything, he's apmarama, he's self-contained. He presents himself as being needy in order to give us the opportunity for service. Just like in the form of the deity, we do various types of service for the Lord. We cook for him, we wake him up, we dress him very decoratively, we, we glorify him. So many things, personal service to the Lord. But the Lord doesn't need any of these things. He's satisfied in himself. But he gives us the opportunity to render these service for our benefit. But he appears to be in a position of dependency, just to inspire us in our devotional life. So, but the Lord is so pleased by the service of his devotee that he wants to reciprocate. We have the case of Dhruva again. Dhruva is a nice example. It's probably the perfect example of how Dhruva, after seeing the Lord, he just lamented his foolishness for asking for something material. And the Lord heard his prayers, blessed him, and gave him all kinds of mercy simply by his darshan. Dhruva was fully Krishna conscious. And then the Lord said, okay, I'll give you a kingdom. <laughs> even though he didn't want it anymore. It's interesting. We come to Krishna consciousness, sometimes we come for some material gain, some material benefit. And Krishna says that in Bhagavad Gita, that four types of people come to me, those who are miserable or suffering material life, looking for some satisfaction, some peace within the realm of devotion to the Lord, and those who are looking for some material gain. Sometimes we see even great philanthropists, businessmen, and others who are expert at, at making money approach the Lord in order to increase that success in life. So people come also for material benedictions like that. So it's acceptable. But if one continues in that mood after getting the mercy of the Lord, and then in the same way as Dhruva lamented, we will also lament in that same way because these material benedictions simply cause us, what we say, the mind to be diverted away from the actual goal of Krishna consciousness. Like that. But Krishna is so merciful and so kind, he wants to do something for his devotee. So he's, he's, he's offering Muchikunda, ask me anything you want. Whatever you want. I mean, put yourself in that position. (laughs) If the Lord said, whatever you want, what would you ask for? Don't answer, but just think about it. (laughs) We might, you know, that would be a real test. That would be really, I mean, we get tested in life, but here would be a real test. If the Lord says, whatever you want, (laughs) But Muchikunda said, you know, I only want, I only want you. <laughs> That's all. Because when one has, one has devotion to you, they have everything. That's the perfection, because you are everything. So Srimad Bhagavatam says that the perfection of life is Savai Pum Sam Paro Dharmo, Yato Bhakti Ahoksaje, Ahoitukiya Priyata, Yayatma Suprasiddhati. And it's spoken by Sutta Goswami in the first canto, Srimad Bhagavatam, second chapter. And he's answering the question 
of what is actually the goal of life. What's the goal of life? I mean, there's so many goals, right? And sometimes a person will be so successful materially, they'll be honored and given so many, uh, you know, positions, glorifications. And then one might think, oh, actually I have achieved some success in life. But time finishes all these so-called achievements and benefits. And then it's just another name within the long list of oblivion where everything is finished in due course of time. It doesn't last and then the soul is no longer benefit, no longer gains anything more simply by material success. But the pure devotional service to the Lord is actually the goal. Now we might say pure devotional service. Well, that's not for me. That's for, you know, persons who are so qualified and very fixed up in devotional service. But the Shastras say that everyone, everyone who comes in contact with this movement, Krishna consciousness, the movement of bhakti, should aspire for the highest. One should not accept anything less. Although one may fall short of the highest in, whatever, in this lifetime, still that aspiration must still be there. Prabhupada used to say, there's an, there's an animal, it's called the, the rhino, it's rhinoceros, in short version they call it rhino. Now to catch a rhinoceros is very difficult. It's a very big, ferocious animal and it's fast. It runs very fast and it's also quite mean. So they have these guns specifically geared to kill this type of animal. And a lot of times the guns don't even work. They're not effective. The animal is so powerful. So to catch a rhinoceros, if anyone does, they consider that's considered a great achievement. And Prabhupada used this example that one should try for the highest, nothing less. And that, because that's the nature of the soul's success, is Savaipum som paro damo yato bhakti ahoksaje, pure devotional service to the Lord. Because everything is included in that. What does it mean that everything is included in pure devotional service? That any other desires, aspirations, or tendencies that one has can be fulfilled perfectly, completely, simply by loving service to the Lord. And Krishna makes the process so easy. To love Krishna is easy. Someone said that to Prabhupada. Prabhupada, to remember Krishna is so difficult. Prabhupada said, oh, really? It's easy. <laughs> well, you might say for a pure devotee it becomes easy. But well, how can we forget Krishna? There's nothing outside of Krishna. Everything is within Krishna. Everything is, in one sense, the absolute principle of his existence, either directly or indirectly. So nothing has any connection to anything unless it actually comes from the source, which is Krishna himself. Someone asked Prabhupada, well, uh, you know, uh, how can we see Krishna everywhere? How can we see Krishna everywhere? Of course, when we come to the temple, there's Sri Sri Radha Gopinanji. And our minds become absorbed and our hearts become happy simply by seeing the beautiful form of Sri Sri Radha Gopinath. Sri Sri Gornitai, Gopal Nathji. Our, we, but then we go away and then we look at the material energy in a different way. But actually the material energy is Krishna's energy. He says, Mama Maya, it's my energy. So Prabhupada used the example that whatever you see in this world connected to the source, the owner, in that way you'll never be free, you'll never be separated from the understanding of Krishna. Everything is in Krishna and everything is controlled by Krishna. Everything is created by Krishna, is maintained by Krishna. There's nothing outside of Krishna. In one lecture, Prabhupada astounded everybody in his talk. He said, you're Krishna, I'm Krishna, we're all Krishna. Wow, sounds like Mayavad, right? <laughs> I'm God, you're God, we're all God. But he, then he clarified, he said, no, that there, the absolute truth is simultaneously one and different. I'm talking about the oneness aspect. That outside of the energy, everything actually is one. Even the energy cannot be separated from the source. So in that sense, there's nothing outside of Krishna. 
So therefore, to become Krishna conscious is, is the understanding is that there's nothing outside of Krishna. Okay, now you might say, oh, if I meditate on my wife or my job, is that Krishna? Well, it depends. If you see your wife, your job, or anything in relationship to Krishna, that's Krishna consciousness. If you see it separate, or you see it in the spirit of material enjoyment, then that is maya, that is material. And therefore, that, that what we say, that marginal consciousness, we make a distinction. And therefore, distinction should be made for the sake of activity. But in the absolute sense, nothing is outside of the Lord. <laughs> in the absolute sense, nothing is outside of the Lord. So, to desire anything less than, than Krishna consciousness would be to cheat oneself. Like that. Why? Because anything less just relegates us to another birth in this material world. To take birth, we forget what it's like to take birth. Of course, we can't remember. The process of birth is a forgetful situation. It's not possible to remember what it was like prior to taking birth and actually the appearance of the child in the world. It's such a, a difficult situation, both for the child and for the mother, <coughs> because there's a lot of physical suffering that comes with that. So therefore, one of the miseries in this material world is birth. We say happy birthday, but <laughs> how happy were you are when you were coming out? You weren't so happy. You were you weren't dancing and you know you know offering RT. You were you know crying. <laughs> And sometimes you weren't even breathing properly. So this, you know, birth is, a, is one of the miseries. We might say everyone's afraid of death, right? They say in Bengal, what is the worst thing? Death. There's, the, you know, there's nothing worse. But death is quick, right? But birth is not so quick. <laughs> birth takes a long time. The child within the womb has to stay there for at least nine months undergo various difficulties. And if the situation is not right, the child, and Prabhupada talks about, you know, sometimes the mother is being kicked by the child in the womb. And she's thinking, oh, it's so nice. But the child is actually being bitten by bugs and various other kinds of worms and suffering tremendously. But no one knows. Only the child can experience that. So that suffering that it was we call birth, we forget about it. Why, is, why do we forget? Because it's so miserable that if you remembered it, it would cause you great unhappiness. <laughs> it's the mercy of forgetfulness becomes a part, a part of giving mercy. Just like we might forget what we were in our last life. Why do we forget what we were in the last life? Because we might you know, remember all the difficulties we had in our previous life and we have to relive that suffering. Or we might start to identify with ourselves as something different than we are in this life on the material platform and we can't function in that level. So, therefore, this material energy works in such a way as to whatever way you turn, there is suffering. <laughs> Krishna says it. Not only does he say it, he reminds you of it by saying it many times. Dukalayam asasrita, anitya asubham. He says it twice, at least in one chapter in the Bhagavad Gita, in the ninth chapter. So this material energy is is in, is encouraging us to take shelter of the of the of Krishna, simply by giving us difficulties in our material life. And if you don't have difficulties in your own life, somebody else will make sure you have difficulty. <laughs> he looks too happy. Let's give him some suffering. <laughs> it's just the way the world is. It's called envy, right? When somebody's successful, nobody else is happy, right? <laughs> or someone else is trying to pull that person down. It's just the way this world is. It's designed in, so, in such a way as to def you're defeated on every level. So, therefore, a devotee knows to ask for a material benediction. As Muchikunda here, he was a king. They say the happiness that is enjoyed by the royalty 
is above the normal happiness of the materialist. They have such facility to enjoy their senses in so many various ways. And he understood that. He, saw, he In his previous statements, he says, you know, great kings, they aspire for even greater kingdoms, knowing, not knowing that they're go going to cause themselves greater and more suffering. He criticizes those who aspire for greater achievements, although they are already great. Yeah. It's like, you know, for all of us that, you know, we have, we have our great leaders in the, in the history of our world, Napoleon and, and uh, what else, Stalin and who else, uh, some of the great generals who fought Hitler, some of them who had such power and such influence and such resources to carry out their desires. But, you know, look how they died. They died miserable deaths, you know. Hitler committed suicide. Napoleon, Napoleon was forced to drink horse urine by the British and he died. He was dying on the battlefield and he wanted water. So the British came and gave him horse urine instead of water. Prabhupada talks about this in one lecture. And he died simply by drinking that. So this is, this is, this is the fate of the great persons in this world. Prabhupada said, talks about Nixon when Prabhupada was in America. President Nixon, one of the, when we say the most influential presidents of the modern era, and he had such influence, such power, but you know he made a made a mistake, and they just dragged him down. And Prabhupada said he he was the happiest man, and now he's the most miserable. <laughs> See, this is the nature of material life: that the more successful you are, when you lose it, the more miserable you are. <laughs> if you don't have much and you lose it, it's not such a big loss, right? But if you have a lot, then the, the attachment is even greater and the suffering is even greater when one loses that, which is inevitable in due course of time. So it's better, and that's why it says in, to live a life means one should live according to one's needs. That way one can execute the goal of life easily, naturally, without any difficulties like that. So, and what is the goal of life? Is to they have the opportunity for pure devotional service to the Lord. This month is a very special month. It's the month of Dhammadar. It's a month where we can make greater spiritual progress simply by executing devotional service. Special mercy is given in this particular month because it's Radharani's month. As the next month, Magashirsha is the month of Krishna. Radharani precedes his month by the month of Kartik. So she gives special mercy and therefore any devotional service done at, at this particular time of the year, this month of Kartik, has greater spiritual merit than it has throughout the rest of the year. Such mercy is available by Radharani's kindness. So the Lord is always making arrangements for the conditioned souls to come closer and closer through the process of devotional service. Like that. So therefore, the main point of this verse is that one should not ask for anything other than pure devotional service. But of course, you know, if you please the Lord, He'll give you something out of His kindness. He'll, just like He did with Dhruva. And he's, now He's offering. You know, if Muchikunda would have took something material from the Lord, the Lord wouldn't have said anything. He would have gave it to him with no, with no, with no remorse. But Muchikunda understand that to ask for something like that would simply be, it's like going to, when you meet a great person, and a great person is, for, is pleased with you, and they say, I have millions and millions of rupees, crores of rupees, just ask any amount. And you say, oh, I'll just take, give me five rupees, and that's all. <laughs> he, he might be really concerned. Why are you only asking for five? I'm willing to give you as much more. No, no, that's all. <laughs> so the point is that to, 
to have the opportunity for pure devotional service and to accept anything less is like the, the consciousness of a miser. Miser means one who doesn't know the value of something. <laughs> doesn't know the value of something. So Muchikunda is teaching us that I desire no boon other than service to your lotus feet. The boon most eagerly sought by those free from material desires. O oh, Hari, what enlightened person who worships you, the giver of liberation, would choose a boon that causes his own bondage? So why choose anything but pure devotional service? And by the mercy of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, pure devotional service is readily available through the process of Harinam Sankirtan. Koloka Prema Dana Harinam Sankirtan. That mercy has come as a rain shower in the form of the Lord's holy name. So that's where we purify our heart and aspire for only pure devotional service. As we go deeper into the chanting of the holy names and offer that chanting as an, as an offering to the Lord's lotus feet in devotion, that holy name purifies us from all tendencies other than devotional service. So here, here's where the success to achieve. One might say, well, I don't have a desire for pure devotional service. It doesn't matter. Continue with the process of Harinam Sankirtan, and then gradually, as you become purified, that desire will naturally be awakened. Because that desire is there within the heart. And Nitya Siddha Krishna Prema Saruka Bunoi Sravanadi Siddhi Chitte Kodiye Udoi. Then the hearts of all living beings, only one thing exists pure devotional service to the Lord. There's nothing else there. So the holy name will purify us from any other material desire and awaken that pure loving service to the Lord. So the chanting of the holy name cannot be compared to any other form of purification. It is fast, it is direct, it is imbued with the mercy of the, whole, of the Lord more and more. So this is the mercy that we are looking for. Through Krishna, through chanting his holy name, and through worshiping the Lord in various ways. And when we when we offer our devotion to the Lord, we have an opportunity to do it in a very ordinary way or a very mechanical way, or we can do it from the heart. When the when we offer something from the heart, that offering satisfies the offer and it satisfies the object of offering. So therefore, we have an opportunity to give our love to Krishna at every moment. How does that love ex express? Simply by, by praying to the Lord that please accept this offering as an opportunity for my service to you. Please accept it. So the please is, is the humble petition of the Lord to accept our offering. And that, 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 that humility is the mood that pleases the Lord. Because we can't really give anything to the Lord. But the Lord is eager to receive our devotion like that. So therefore, a devotee knows, or anyone knows, that anything else then service to the Lord is simply shrama eva hi kevalam. <laughs> shrama eva hi kevalam means a useless waste of time. Time is valuable. So you, when you waste it by doing things that are not necessary, in other words, you, taking the material energy and trying to enjoy the material energy. We can't enjoy something that is not enjoyable. <laughs> right? It's like... It's like, you know, somebody made some sweet rice, but then they just poured a whole bunch of sand in it. So it looks, you know, it's still got some, it looks kind of nice. And there's still the flavor of sugar is still in there, but it's mixed with sand and you think, well, I'll just eat around the sand. How do you do that? <laughs> you can't, it's not possible. So this material energy works in such a way as to always mix in misery with, and with everything else that it comes by way of the material life. 
You should know every time you're successful in some material, something in material life, along with it comes the, comes the feature of misery along with the success. That's how material energy works. So therefore, a devotee knows, a one who is intelligent, one who has good intelligence, Sumedha Saha, knows that any material adventure for increasing one's happiness in this world is just bringing more and more suffering. Do the needful, but focus on pure devotional service to Krishna, which is our birthright and is the essence of our aspirations for happiness. We're looking, that's what we're looking for. Prabhupada said, everyone's looking for Krishna. Some of us know it and some of us don't. <laughs> Everyone is looking for Krishna. Also. And Krishna can be found in so many ways, through his holy name, through the association of his devotees, through his deity, through offering devotion to his deity, to reading transcendental knowledge that glorifies him, and to his, his prasadam, which is non different than him also. So Krishna manifests his, his qualities, his nature, through various manifestations of himself, simply to attract our minds and hearts in, in devotional service. So therefore, to aspire for anything less than that is what we say, it's self-deception. <laughs> It's cheating. It's another form of cheating. Okay. So, Sisi Radha Gopinachi Ki Questions? Anyone? That means everyone agrees. <laughs> If you don't question, that means you agree or you don't know what to ask. So either one. <laughs> so everyone agrees. Right. Okay. Yes, question. Do we have a microphone? <laughs> Thank you, Maharaj, for a wonderful class. Um, Maharaj, uh, you said that we should aspire for the pure devotional service. Mm -hmm. But uh, as a sadhaka, when we do devotional service, uh, we feel that uh, the attachments to matter is so much that even though we know the thing, but to just to act on it, it uh, means uh, it's, a, it's a very tug of war many times. Means, uh, just to act on that principles and we find a short, a short in it ourselves. Yeah. So, so what, uh, what we should actually uh, to go on with uh, that aspiration, what sh what should we always do? Well, the question is, we know to that it's to aspire for material things. We know that it's not the goal. It's going to cause us suffering. But still, we don't have the strength to reject it, right? <laughs> well, in the 11th canto, in one purport, and Vishwanath Chakravanti Thakur gives some consolation. He says that one should not become discouraged if one still, Simha, still takes up the process of sense gratification. But one should pray at the same time, my dear Lord, although I don't want this, still I'm very much attached to it. So simultaneously praying for the detachment from that but maybe not giving it up immediately. So therefore, and that one will open themselves up to the mercy of the Lord. If we still want it, if we still think there's some happiness and success in achieving these things, that's, that will cause us more suffering. But if we know it, but we're still too weak to reject it, then one can pray for that mercy. And... Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur gives a very long explanation in a very beautiful way how the soul prays to be detached from that but still is forced by, by past, past bad habit to act in the same way like that. The tendency. See, material energy conditions us in a certain direction and to change directions 
is very difficult sometimes, depending on the depth of that attachment. Sometimes we say just like your karma is pushing you in a certain way to think and act in a certain way. So it's like driving a car. When you're driving a car and you're going at a certain speed, if you're going fast, to make a turn will cause you to have an accident unless you slow down. <laughs> So making a turn away from our material activities means we slow down those activities and start to direct our attention towards spiritual activities. So gradually then it becomes easier <laughs> like that. Now don't mistake in material needs for material desires. We have material needs. We have to maintain this body. That's not material desire. If we maintain the body in order to enjoy material life, then that's then it's material desire. If we maintain the body in order to practice the goal of life, that's not material. That is supportive of our goal of life, which is devotional service to the Lord. So sometimes the people get shook up when we give these classes that we should give up everything. It's not that you stop living. <laughs> But you have to understand what is the difference between need and greed. <laughs> or what is the difference between what is necessary and what. Ishavasham midam sarvam yat kinchat jagam tachagatena jaktena bunjitaha margaraha kosa swiddhanam. And this is the first verse in Sri Ishupanishads that everything in this material world is owned and controlled by the Lord, and one should take their quota. And if one lives according to their quota, then one can aspire for, to live for hundreds of years. But if one goes beyond their quota and simply tries to, what we say, proliferate that idea of more, simply by becoming successful in whatever you do, then there's no end to that. And then there's no time for Krishna consciousness. And one loses the, the enthusiasm for the pure devotional service. So, therefore, one has to evaluate, what do I need in life to live? And the needs are more or less different from individual to individual. But basically, they're this, the same types of needs, but the quantities may be different. A brahmachari needs less than a grihastha. A grihastha has to maintain the family. So there's some more material needs like that. So needs are always the foundation for living but they're not you know shouldn't be go one should not go beyond as a way of what we say to a way to enjoy like that. okay so you have to see do you need this is it necessary <laughs> yes Mataji mm -hmm. Uh huh. Well, so you have responsibility taking care of children. Not taking care of the children. I'm devoting time, playing with them, teaching them things, so that they become better citizens, and and knowing the leela of the kids what they talk, I teach them, just like a mother or a aunt to them. So, because I cannot keep running out of my house, so in my neighborhood I'm with the kids. Okay. And I see Krishna in, in the, the kids now. But you have to teach them. Yeah, I teach Krishna. them. Teach them about Krishna. Yeah, I teach them. Okay, but if you're teaching them about Krishna, that's nice. Because that'll make them happy. Even if you give them everything material, it won't make them happy. The material needs are there, but the real need of the heart, the real need of the, the living being is Krishna. Krishna Matta, Krishna Pitta, Krishna Dana Pran. Krishna is everything. And if, you, if you're giving them the material aspect without Krishna, then they won't, be, they won't really appreciate it. They'll, they'll actually love you when, they, when you give them Krishna. 
Love means to do something for someone that will make them happy. Yes. So making them happy materially comes and goes. <laughs> making them happy with Krishna, that never leaves. That always increases. So material happiness is subject to time. But spiritual is always not within time and it's always growing. The more you give Krishna, the more that person grows in, in their relationship with you, with others, and of course with Krishna too. When is, when is Krishna conscious? There's nothing else to aspire for. They find everything they need in life automatically through the process of becoming Krishna conscious. So the greatest thing you can do for anyone is give them Krishna. <laughs> or give them a chance in whatever way they can understand to connect with Krishna. I play with them also so that uh, you know they get involved yeah. in the games also. Yeah. Oh, Krishna conscious. We're all children. <laughs> no. Good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're they're at an age where they're ready to receive whatever you give them. So, there's an old saying in Bengal that when the bamboo is young, you can bend it. But when the bamboo gets older, it becomes hard, and you try to bend it, it breaks. So now's the time to give them Krishna consciousness when they're young, because then it'll go directly into their existence, and they'll keep that through a whole life. Thank you. <laughs> Anything else? Okay. Is there, okay. Thank you very much. Srila Prabhupada, Keed. Gaur Primanande Hari 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 Krishna. Mm -hmm.